Okay, this is better. Okay, now this is a little tricky, or what should I say, tricky but very, very interesting. So again, the question is, write a program that converts a given number of days to year, month, and days remaining. So again, you, know, you need to spend some time in understanding or grasping you know, the very question or the problem. Uh, write a program that converts a given number of days, let's say 1001. So these number of days you know, should be expressed in the form of the number of years, the number of months, and the number of days. So if you do the manual calculation, let's say 1001, you know, how do you have this converted to number of years? Let's assume that the number of years barring the leap year, you know, will have 365, okay? So 365. So if we divide 1001 by 365, uh, the quotient, you know, how many 365, you know, do we have in 1001? You know, understandably, you, know, you will have uh, like 365 multiplied by uh, 2s, uh, 600, uh, 600, uh, 365, okay, uh, it'll be like you know, 700 something, okay, uh, and then, so once you get the number of years, once you get the number of years, and then we need to pick up the number of days, and then find the number of months. In the remaining number of days okay and then whatever the number of days left you know should be left as it is okay so uh, we're trying to have this converted uh, 365 you know multiplied by 2 is how much 65 into 2 is 130 okay so I guess you know it is uh, 730 if, if I'm if I'm right so if I, you know, just take out 730 from here, 730 from here, you know, I have two years, okay? I have two years in 1001 days. So that will take off 730. So this is the algorithm of the logic. And then, you know, once I take out 730 from 1001, I am left with 231. 271, sorry, right, 271. So I have two years already in 1001 number of days. So out of 271, how many months do I have? How many months do I have in 271? So again, in order to simplify the program, we'll take the number of days in a month as 30. So if you divide 270 by 271 by 30, you know, you should get the quotient in the form of integer. I repeat, you know, uh, in the form of integer. All right. So, uh, if you divide 270 by 30, you know, you should have 3 times 9 is 27. Okay. So, you have 9 months. So, in 271 days, if you take out 9 months, you know, you are left with 1 day. So, your answer should be 1000 number of days is equal to two years, nine months, and then one day. You know, I hope you understood the question. So let's start with a program. But before this, you know, I want you to uh, know something about an operator called modulus. Okay, modulus operator, you know, you need to understand this. So I'll just show you how it works. Modulus operator is the operator which will print the remainder of a division process. A number when divided by another number, dividend divided by a divisor, if you want to determine the remainder. So the right operator is the present. Let's you know understand this. Let's say if I divide if I have four focus on this output screen, four and then this is the modulus operator. Okay, the percent sign is the modulus operator. It prints the remainder of a result of a division process. Okay, so 4, 3. 
you know, when you divide 4 by 3, the remainder will be, uh, sorry, the remainder will be, yes, the remainder will be 1. Okay, if you divide 4 by 3, uh, 3 times 1 is 3, 4 minus 3 is 1. So first you need to get this right. Now let's say if I divide uh, 15 by, sorry, 15 modulus 2, you know, I should again have the remainder as 1. You know, let's try something else. Say, you know, 7 or 9 uh, modulus, you know, the 2, okay, sorry, 3, you know, the remainder will be 0. Okay, so all in all, you know, the percent is the modulus operator which will print, you know, a, a remainder on dividing a number, a certain number by another number. Okay, so that's you not know, fairly simple. Now let's get on with the program. So we are going to use the modulus operator. Okay, all right. So first things first, get the number of days. The number of days, let's say it's 1001. So in order to shorten the program, now, if you are very much comfortable with the usage of int, the input statements, you know, you can assign the value directly like this, okay? So, now this number, you know, will be a fixed value which will be a part of nd, so which means there will be no int or the input statements. And then, now the first things first, we need to find the quotient, okay? We need to find the quotient, remember? 1001 divided by 365, you know, the quotient is 2. And that quotient indicates the number of years which we could extract from so many number of days. Okay, so number of years, n number of years is equal to uh, n days, you know, the division sign. Okay, but, but, but we have two division operators. You know, this is the float division operator, F L O A T, which will give the answers in the form of real number or the float values. But here, you know, we just would like to focus on the integer part. If the value is 2 point something, we just want to know the integral part of the number and that will give us the uh, number of years. Okay, so do not use the float division operator, rather you have to use the floor, okay? Now when I say float or float, I'm referring to, uh, I'm referring to this, okay? This is float and this is floor. Float means the quotient will be in the form of real number, okay? Say if you divide uh, 3 by 2, okay, you will get the answer as 1.5. I think it's, it's a good idea if I could show you this, it will help you to clear the concept just push this here see I mean like this let's say if I have 3 divided by 2 the answer will be 1.5 so this operator is called float F -L -O -A -T. you will get the answer in the form of float however if I have this okay you will get the answer as just one you know this is what you mean this is what you mean by float Floor, ceiling and floor. So 1.5 should be somewhere in the middle. But your the, the floor value, the lower value will be 1 and the ceiling value or the upper value will be 2. Okay, I hope you got me. So that's the reason why they actually call it as floor division operator. This is float division operator. So why do we say floor? Now let's say if I had something like this. Uh, you know, let's say 10 you know, uh, by 3, okay, 10 divided by 3, something like this. If I press enter, I'll get the answers like this. However, if I use the floor division operator, it will just print the integral part. It will just, you know, get rid of the fractional values. It will just focus on uh, the integral part, okay. So this is the difference between the two. And then, let's continue further. So, and, so the idea is, you are not supposed to use the float division operator, rather you have to use the float, alright? Just get rid of this. So the divisor should be 365. So in 1001 divided by 365, you should have the answer as 2 point something. Okay, perhaps 2.8 something. 
So this two integer will be assigned to number of hits. Okay. Now you know we need to focus on the number of days. Okay, we got the year. Now from the remaining number of days, I now need to find the number of uh, the months available in the remaining number of days. Okay, so first I need to get the number of days left or remaining as a result of dividing n days by 365. So number of months, okay, number of months is equal to, first I need to, you know, retrieve uh, the number of days left after extracting the number of years. So it's going to be like this, n days modulus now this is important that's when the modulus operator comes into the picture n days and you have 365 so what will be the result of this 1001 divided by 365 the remainder is 271 okay so once i get the remaining number of days which is 271 and that 271 you know should be further divided by 30 considering you know the month as uh, the 30 days, even though it has 29, 31, but just to make the program simpler. But in days to come, you know, we will surely have a way out to deal with, you know, such combination. But as of now, we'll just focus on making the program as simple as possible. So I hope you are clear with this. 1001 modulus 365 will give us the value of 271. 271, you know, divided by 30, you know, 3 times 9, uh, 30 times 9 is 271, right? So I get the value of 9. So the 9 will be assigned to months. So the value of months will be 9. And then the number of days. So I just have this number to days. And then number of days is equal to n days, okay? Modulus operator 365 and then modulus operator, you have 30. I hope you are clear with this. 1001 modulus 365 will give us the value of 271. Okay? And 271, when divided by 30, you know, I'll get the remainder. And the remainder is just 1. Remember? And then 1 will be assigned to n d. And then let's print the, the output. We'll make the output little better 1001 has okay uh, n years the value of n years is 2 2 years okay and then uh, the number of n months is uh, 9 remember and then we'll have the unit 9 months and then finally n days okay this is n days so i'll just okay n days is fine and then equal to day since you know the number of days remaining is just one we'll use just day like this and then close it so you get the output like this these are the plain strings so they'll be printed as it is 1001 uh, n days 1001 has the value of n years is 2 2 years, the value of n months is 9, 9 months, and then 1 day. So we'll just save this, and then let, let's run the program, okay? okay? Let's run the program and check how the output will be run like this. Okay, I have an error. n days is not defined. Look, look at this. Now, it's a good idea. Good idea in the sense, you know, if, if the, the program reports an error, which are likely scenario in your programming uh, process, okay? But, you know, just look at the output. Uh, the Python interpreter is very friendly in nature. It will highlight the error. It says, NJS is not defined, which means, you know, I have used, you know, the NJS here, okay? But this NJS, you know, is not recognizable, okay? Up here, I have the days, but I have used here n days, n days, n days. So, which is a mistake. So, the Python interpreter says, it has no idea, you know, what this n days is. 
and the Python interpreter is very much quiet. End days, end days, end days. Where is it? You know, I don't have any uh, initial variable by the name of end days. Rather, it's days. Okay. So there you go. This is how you fix the error. So now, even though I have not uh, made the mistake on purpose, but it gives us a wonderful opportunity to fix the error. All right. So just get rid of this. Get rid of this. Okay. And then you have here, that's it. And then we'll run the program again. Hopefully we get this right. There you go. So days is equal to 1001. So in the, the earlier mistake was I've used n days by mistake. Okay. So 1001 is assigned to days. Days will be multiplied by 365. The answer is 2. Uh, 1001 modulus operator 365, you'll get the answer as 271. 271 divided by 30 will be 9. So the value of n months will be 9. 1001 modulus 365 is uh, 271. 271 modulus operator is just 1. So 1 becomes the value of n day. Hence, you get the output as 1001 has 2 years, 9 months, and then you have 1 day. So again, this is another way to test your program skill. The question is a little uh, different you know, from the earlier two. Okay, so I hope you are clear with this. Now let's move on to the next program. Okay, what do we have here? Just pull this up. Okay, again, this is an interesting question. Let's first have this converted to the comments, right? Okay, like this. Okay, there you go. Write a program to input a single digit, uh, print, a three-digit number created as n, n plus 1, n plus 2. For example, if the value of n is 7, then the output should be 7, 8, 9. Uh, and then, uh, but the program has this limitation. You know, the value of n, you know, I've uh, forgotten to mention this. The value of n should be between 1 to 7. Okay, the value of n should be between 1, 2, from 1 to 7, so not more than that. So if the value of n is 7, your answer should be 7, 8, 9. If the value of uh, n is 7, you know, you should have 7 plus 1 is 8, and then you have 7 plus 2 is 9. So the, again, think over the logic. If I have the value of n, okay, and then if you multiply n by 100, Okay, let's say if the value of n is 7, so this is you know, the, the very logic behind the program. How do you do it? It's not like, where is the capital city of India, New Delhi? You know, no, uh, it's a little more complicated than this. You need to first find a way out. How are you going to do it? You know, once you have this logic clearly you know, picturized in your mind, and then get on with the programming, you know, this is the right idea. So, you know, if the value of n is 7, if you multiply 7 by 100, it will be like 7, 0, 0. Get the next number. 7 plus 1 is 8. Multiply by 10. So that becomes 80. Okay? And then finally, n plus 2, 7 plus 2. 7 plus 2 is 9. Multiply it by just 1. So when you add all these, 700 plus 80 is 7, 8, 0. And then add it to the 9. You know, you will have 7, 8, 9 lined up, right? So it's a very simple program, but, a, you know, a beautiful way to start the programming life. So let's get started. So first things first, n is equal to, we'll try to get this. Okay, no problem. And then input, enter a number, right? But remember, the number should be between 1 to 7. So the instruction needs to be clearly stated to the user, all right? Okay? Now, why am I converting to integer S? Because I have to carry out the arithmetic calculation. So you better have this converted to integer, otherwise it will not work. And then, uh, now the next step is the new number, okay? The new number will be N multiplied by 100. Remember, 7 should be multiplied by 100 so that the 7 stays at uh, unit 10, 100 place. 
Okay, so we are pushing the seven into the hand. You need ten hundred picks, right? So I close it, and then I should have this added width. I should have this added width n plus one. I should get the eight first, right? Get it, and then multiply this by ten. So the value of n will be the value of n will be how much? You know the uh, seven. It's seven. Seven plus one is eight. Eight multiplied by ten is eighty. So when you add seven hundred with eighty, you know you have these two digits. You know correctly, please add seven eight. It's now time to get the uh, the nine, right? So in order to be safe, I don't know whether it make much of difference, but at times you know it does. So be careful. First, you know I want to evaluate this. I want to make sure that I get 80 here, 700 here, and then just to play safe, and then finally you have n plus 2, and then have it enclosed in a pair of double brace, braces. So, so n is how much? 7, 7 multiplied by 100 is 700, and then 7 plus 1 is 8, you have 8 multiplied by 10 is 80, and then 7 plus 2 is 9. So you have numbers like 700 plus 80, Plus nine, so that will give you the answer as seven eight nine, which is as per the uh, the the question. Okay, so and then you know just print it, print the new number, the new three digits number is okay. So you know it has to be new number. Be careful because I have an uppercase here. That's it, I guess. So when you run the program, you know, now the program becomes simpler and simpler. Just run this, and then it prompts the user for a number. If you enter 7, I get the current output as 789. Let's see if I run the program again. Okay, let's see, 2, the answer should be 2, 3, 4. Okay, sometimes what happens is your program runs on 1, Combination of the input, but it fails to run on another uh, input combination. So you cannot say like I got the program right with this. No way. Your program is correct logically if it runs for all the possible combination. You know, tomorrow if you come up with the uh, the billing software for one of the supermarkets, you know, is it okay if it runs correctly accurately for one customer if it doesn't run? Correctly for the other customers, you know, this is sheer impossible, right? So you need to make sure that your program runs correctly for all the input combination. You know, I come across a lot of students, you know, who show me the program, the working of the program correctly for one. Uh, uh, more often than not, you know, it works perfectly all right for their input, uh, the combination. But the moment I supply in a new you know, the input combination, the program crashes. So that should not be the case. The program should run correctly regardless of any combination of the inputs, right? So now let's move on to the last program for today's video lesson, right? So I'll just get this up. Okay, and then I'll leave, I'll leave the number six for you. Okay, this is better. Again, let's read the question properly, right? The question is, write a program to accept a quantity of a product and its price. I don't want to make it more than one hour. Uh, write a program to accept a, accept a quantity of a product and its price. The discount rate is 10%. Print the total amount, the net amount as well, and, and the discount amount. Now, let's say... You know, we'll do a rough calculation. You know, if the quantity of the product is 10, okay, I buy 10 number of books and the price is 20. Let's say a book costs 20 rupees. The quality is how much? 10, the price is 20. Uh, the total amount is 10 multiplied by 20. You know, that is 300. Uh, the net amount, the discount rate is how much? 10%. Uh, the discount rate being 10% means the 10% of 200 is uh, 20. Uh, 20 rate. The 10% of 
uh, 200 as 20 rupees. Okay, so the discount amount is how much? Uh, 20 rupees. The total amount is 200. The net amount is total amount minus the discount amount. So the total amount will be 200. Okay, the discount amount will be 20. And the net amount will be 180. Okay, provided you know the quality of product being 10 and the price being 20. Okay, so uh, based on the input values of 20 as quality, uh, quality as 10, price as 20, you know, we should get the, uh, the necessary or the required total amount is 200, uh, 20, and then net amount as 180. So the net amount means uh, the amount which is calculated after deducting the discount amount from the total amount, right? So this is a very common picture in your the bill after you do the shopping, right? So now this time for a change, you know, we would be requiring two inputs. The first one is the, the price or and the second one is quantity. So let's get the quantity first. Uh, QTY or okay QTY equals int. So we'll keep the values to integer in order to make the program sound a little simpler. And then input. Now you should be familiar with all these statements. Enter the quantity. Okay, how many you are, how many books you are going to buy? Okay, and then comes the price. Price int input and then you have enter the price right okay now it's time to calculate the total amount now the programs you know will start to look and feel simpler and easier so first things first we'll calculate the total amount right so total about you cannot ever leave space in between okay make sure you know you do not make such mistakes if you leave a space the interpreter will treat this as a different word and this as a different word which will in all likelihood report an error. So if you really want to separate the values, you know, why don't you have this? Just like you cannot leave a space in uh, the email addresses, you know, the web addresses, the URL. Likewise, the space will create confusion. Okay, so if you leave one space, you know, you'll be allowed to leave two spaces. So the question is, you know, how many spaces? So that will add to the confusion or the complexity of the program. You know, it poses a great deal of challenge to the programmers. Perhaps that's the reason why, you know, we do away with, you know, allowing spaces in between. So if you really want to leave spaces, underscore is a wonderful idea. And total amount is equal to, it's simple, right? Quantity needs to be multiplied by the price. Okay, so that's how you get it. So we have assumed the value of quantity as how much? 20 and the price of a book as 10. So 20 multiplied by 10 is 200. Okay, now we'll calculate the discount amount. The discount amount, discount rate is fixed at, at 10 per cent. 10 per means out of, cent means 100. So 10 divided by 100 is referred to as 10 per cent, okay? Now let's calculate the discount amount. So this amount is equal to, you know, 10% could be, you know, interpreted as 0 0.1, right? Or, you know, if you, uh, I think, you know, uh, it's better to have this converted to float, okay? I think it's better to say float because I'm using the 0 0.1, okay, just to play safe. And then discount amount is equal to the total amount, right? Now these are simple maths multiplied by 0 0.1. 0 0.1 is equal to 10 divided by 100. So the question is 10 percent, right? 10 percent means 10 divided by 100. So 10 divided by 100 means 0 0.1. So or 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 in other words, you can have it like this: 10 divided by 100. So 10 percent of total amount means 10 per cent of the total amount, right? 
or to make the program a little simpler, perhaps you can have 0 0.1. Either way, it's right. So once you get the discount amount, now this will be like, you know, 200 multiplied by 0 0.1 will be 20. So 20 becomes the value of discount amount. And then uh, let's calculate the net amount. Net amount is the amount after deducting, deducting the discount amount from the total amount, right? So total uh, amount, okay? Make sure that you get the spelling right, minus, and then you have the discount amount, right? And then finally, it's time to print, print the output. So I'll just have something like this. The total amount is equal to uh, the variable which has the total amount is total and then you have EMT and the next step is print. Uh, let's have the discount amount, right, is equal to uh, this amount. Okay, I got this right. Just look at the color. You know, do you see you know, some changes in the color? Okay, so these colors, you know, the, the purple color is meant to highlight the, uh, the keyword, okay, and the green color is meant for the string values, look at this, and the black are for the user-defined variables. So these are generally uh, meant not to make the program look colorful, you know, in fact, it has a, you know, uh, the intention is to help the programmer to, you know, come up with logically correct uh, the program and then uh, and then finally you know let's print the let's print the net amount right amount payable net amount is equal to and then the variable which has the, the net amount is net underscore amount all right so we'll just save this and then just run and check how the output will look like just save this save it and then let's run the program and check okay there you go see you know the moment you make a mistake i've missed it it highlights and then let's run the program oops what happened okay i forgot to convert this to the comment right okay save it and then let's run the program again. Okay, now this time we got the quantity. The quantity was assumed to be 20. Remember? 20 books and then the price is 10. Uh, and then, you know, the output is total amount is 20 multiplied by 10 is 200. Uh, the 10 percent of 200 is 20. And then 200 minus the discount amount is 180. Now let's say we run the program again. You know, say 30 quality and then 5 okay so this will be like 30 multiplied by 5 is 150 uh, the 10 percent of 150 is 15 and then the net amount is total amount minus discount amount is 135 right so once you you know wrote the program which runs correctly accurately logically you know uh, accurate then you know once we have this program built you know, you could use this over and over again. You know, we don't have to do the hard work of calculating the, uh, the total amount, the discount amount, and the net amount. This is the whole idea behind writing the program, assigning the work to machine once and for all. Okay, so uh, there is one more question, you know, which is pretty much the same as, you know, one of the, the earlier questions. So this is like, just get it, get it up. Push this little down. Okay, so write a program that asks your height in centimeters and then converts your height to feet and inches. So one foot is equal to 20, 12 inches, one inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters. If I give you a rough idea, uh, you know, say you have the centimeters accepted by, accepted, you know, from the user and then, you know, have it converted to number of inches. So the unit, you know, that is being converted from centimeter to inch, inch. The relationship is, you know, one inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters. So if you have like 10 centimeters, how do you have it converted to inches? We need to divide the number of centimeters by 2.54.
You know, this is again simple mathematics. And then likewise, uh, how do you convert number of centimeters into foot is? You know, you should be dividing the number of centimeters by 12 into 2.54. You now first have to convert it to number of inches by dividing by 2.54. And then once you get the number of inches, again, you need to have this divided by 12. So if you think properly, you know, the program is no different from, you know, the earlier programs. It's just that, you know, it has little twists here and there, but uh, the larger, the crux of the matter will remain pretty much the same, all right? So with this, I would like to wind up, and I hope, you know, with the end of today's uh, video lesson, you know, you will have a feel-good factor in dealing with uh, some of the relatively shorter programs or the simpler programs, you know, where it's mostly about you know, the conversion and you know, the calculation which are fairly simple in nature. And then, you know, the, in the next class, I would like to start the new chapter of data handling. Now, the beginning chapters are pretty short and simple in nature. So, until then, you know, take care and please study hard. Thank you so much.